three, two, one, go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Conjure Community. I am Aaron Fisher. I'm here with Adam, Alex, and Steve from the Conjure Community Club. It's the world's best magic club. And today we're going to be digging deep into some Martin Lewis magic. So do us a favor as we get started, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so you'll be notified every time we go live with a new video. And for the benefit of our club, stick to the topic for just a moment. Hi, boys. How's it going? <laughs> stick to the topic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We did so good. We did so good. So yesterday, so yesterday, oh, no, it wasn't yesterday. It was the day before yesterday. We we had a chance to dive in and look at some of Martin Lewis's uh, magic. That's right. right. The Technicolor, Technicolor prediction. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But what we uh, conveniently left off from that show is what I would say is his most famous creation of all time, uh, which is called uh, cardiographic. Now, if you don't know this trick, I got to tell you, it's going to nail you because it's awesome. And if you also don't know this trick, then you m probably haven't seen a lot of magicians because I think this is probably a trick that's in more magicians act than just about any other. It's like the producing bowling ball, right? This is like one of those tricks that if you've seen a bunch of magic shows, you've seen it, one like a bunch of times. This point is true. Right? It is the ultimate pack small plays big. And, so, and incidentally, Adam, we can discuss this later, but don't you think it's odd that this is the most famous Martin Lewis trick? I do. I do think it's odd because he's got he's 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 a clever fellow and he's got so many sidewalk like, shuffle alone. <clears throat> but you know what I think it of I, I think this one just I I remember when this one came out like I was a kid when this one launched I remember seeing it in the magic magazines and it just was different. It, it was so different from anything that had ever come before it that it was shocking and expensive. It was expensive in the you know. I when think you bought the other, this trick, it was your water loop. No, yeah. the other thing I think too is well, it's like a super commercial effect, and everyone's always looking for a good, you know, selected card revelation. You know, Another and this one's thing. magical and it's mind blowing. You know, it's, it's really good. It's Another definitely got that look. Along. Another mm -hmm. thing that helps it along is David Copperfield did it on TV, right? It doesn't I mean, hurt. It doesn't. It's a hurt. pretty big commercial for a magic trick if you see David do it. To be fair, y'all. One of the, just as we watch this trick, keep in mind, right? Not only does it pack small, play big, Technicolor Prediction does that too. But this one, you can really see magic happening. Mm -hmm. And you can see magic happening for what you can call an extended period of time. It's not just pop, right? It's not like setup, setup, setup. There it was, hope you didn't blink. It's like the magical moment, it lasts a good long while. So even if you're not attentive, you still get to see it. You know, it's good. It's All a right. very special trick. Let's jump in. Let's just watch it. What do you say? And see if you can find the yarn while you're watching. <laughs> All right, here we go. Peggy. Peggy, would you help me, Peggy? Sure. Uh, I'll just shuffle through the cards. You tell me when to stop, okay? Stop. You can you can sit down, Peggy. It's not a big part. <laughs> <laughs> now take a look at the card, Peggy. Remember it. That's very important. You all forget what it is. And put then show you you jump guys out this okay that's good and then just put it back inside oh on top Peggy you are so helpful thank you so much that, that makes my life a lot easier now <laughs> I'm not going to eat the pack Peggy because I'm going to endeavour to look into your thoughts see if I can't get an image of the card you're thinking of and I'll draw a picture of it on a sketch pad I brought with me for that very purpose now let's take a look Ooh, whoa. <laughs> New Sharpie. Wow. <laughs> now concentrate, Peggy. Okay. You know what? Um, oh, this is better. I can see what I'm doing now. <laughs> I'll let you in on a secret. When it comes to drawing pictures of cars that people are thinking of, pretty much everybody in this room can do this part. <laughs> this is the hard part is filling it in. Now, Peggy, don't give me any clues, but you know, I'm rather hoping you selected a black card because quite honestly, <coughs> I only have a black pen. So we're stuck with that. And as I do this drawing, I ask you to bear in mind mm -hmm. that I am no Rembrandt. Then of course, Rembrandt was no <coughs> magician, so we're even on that score. <laughs> 
And when I finish the drawing, as I say, uh, you can have it. It'll be a souvenir for you to take home of the card that you're simply thinking of, the ace of clubs. Wrong. Wrong? Really? Not the cut? Okay, but it's a nice drawing. Um, Okay, that's because this is not the Ace of Clubs. This is the front of a pack of cards. Here is the rest of the pack in the background. <laughs> Your card is the 14th from the top. Thank you so much. Okay, it's not much of a trick. I knew you wouldn't like it. I, I didn't think you wouldn't like it that much. Um, just out of interest, what was the card that you... Uh, Two the two of hearts. Well, man, I wasn't even warm. I was like, I should probably not do mind reading. I'm no good. I should stick with what I know. And one of my favourite tricks is the rising card oh, trick. Oh, I add these lines to the drawing, that gives that picture a feeling of motion, you understand. Uh, and like all good artists, I'll sign my work. Because I did promise you could have this and I'm a man of my word. Notice that nothing slides in or out, up or down, but it's just a picture. Tell your friends what happened. What if he leaves one person alive to tell the story? Right? I mean, such a, such a great stand-up trick. It's, it's awesome. so great on so it's many levels. Really I, I noticed something new that I hadn't noticed about it before, which I, you know, because I, I haven't performed it. I've just seen it over and over again. And like a lot of tricks you see over and over again, you maybe stop watching it so carefully. Um, but you know how he's doing that bit with name of black card mm -hmm. and everything? There's really a conflation between a named card and a forced card there. That really, by the time the audience is watching a card floating out of the deck, there's no one who leaves there convinced you know that that card was selected from a pack rather than just thought of you know what i mean you, and exactly and i think that is one of the simplest things that you can do that extends that that miracle that in their person's mind by having them select a the card and then just a few minutes later going you're just thinking of a card right and it's this just so like powerful and this conflates it even further right yeah i'm wondering if i could go off script just just a moment because because uh, you know I, I remember the moment that I saw this for the first time and that was when Copperfield yeah. did it. Alex we don't have that clip right? I No. Okay. But I, but I remember pretty specifically how Copperfield d did it and he does not do it the way that Martin does. He, he does, does it, it and I've, I've, I've pulled up a video of it here and oh, I'm great. wondering if maybe we could watch Copperfield's approach to cardiographic because yeah, it's do it. way different. It's, it's totally cool and way okay. different. You should. All right, all right. Let, let's check it out. Let me. Uh, I know it's not that long of a trick. It says eight minutes. It can't be eight minutes long. No, right? you just cut to the meat of it. You'll get it. Okay. All right. Here we go. Just cut, the the part you really want is the rising. That's what's really different. The way he he handles the rising of the car. So oh, yeah. just to just to zoom through it and give you some screenshots here, he's using giant jumbo cards. He's got lots of. Let me see how long it really is. Okay, I got something. I I go oh, back okay. a bit. All right, it's not that it's, long. It's three minutes long. Let's just watch it. What were you gonna say, Steve? Go ahead. It'll it'll come up here and then I'll say something about it. Okay. Right here, Ellen. Are all the cards different? Each and every card is a different card. Ellen, you have a free choice. Take your finger and touch a card and keep your finger there. You can stick with that one or change your mind, whatever you like. That's the one you want? Keep your finger there. I'm going to move it to the top very slowly. Is that, uh, is that fair? That's fair. Okay, good. Memorize it. Got it? Hug it tight, both hands. Good. She had a free choice of any of these cards. Ellen, I'm going to try to uh, read your mind. Ellen, uh, come, come close to me. A little bit closer. Even closer. <laughs> hey, it's my job. <laughs> I'm going to stand with my back to you. Press up against me. Cheek to cheek. <laughs> it's very important that I feel the vibrations. <laughs> so, Ellen, take your right hand and put it on my leg. Press a little harder, Ellen. Some old school yeah. top of I want you to make a mental picture of your card. I'm going to try to draw a picture of it on this pad, okay? But first, let's have some mind-reading music. I want to know who 
We're gonna totally get flagged for this song, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mute it. Yes, this this material is from another time and another place. You almost can imagine. So far, so good. Not happening. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. You have like, to ima imagine the music's playing. Yeah. You can. You can do. Look, they're dancing. I can imagine the music. I can feel the oh. music. feel the vibration. <laughs> Tell me what's on your mind. <laughs> I want to know when yeah, that might do it though. You just do that enough, and that might get. Is fun. he really? I mean, let's go, David. <laughs> He's literally. Uh, He's filling time, dude. He's got to make it four minutes long. This girl is really, you know. He's playing the brass band. All right. Let's see. The card you've been thinking of the card you've been holding on to all this time is the Ace of Clubs. Oh, okay. Say yes. No, no. Is it the Ace? Of Clubs? Are you serious? It's really not here. Really not. Really? Hello? Yeah. It's a little creepy. Let me see. Can I see? <laughs> and it felt so good dancing with you, too. <laughs> this is the three of the uh, parts. I'm only off by two. <laughs> well, actually, this is really not the Ace of Clubs. It's actually the front card of an entire deck. No, really, look, all you have to do is draw some dimension. And there's 51 more cards here. He did a little different there. And Ellen, mm -hmm. your card. I remember it because it comes out of the middle of the pack, doesn't it? Thank you very much. Let me see this for a second. Three of, uh, three of hearts, I see, hold on to it just like this. Everybody, keep your eye on the picture. All right, that's it. Look how different that is, though. So uh, maybe a year or two ago, there was a college guy, like a college performer. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he's, he like pretty much does that exact routine. This is the way Copperfield does it. Exactly that way. Uh -huh. And uh, he can't really do it that way anymore. And he took like, it went viral. He took a ton of heat. And basically, I don't think he can play colleges. I forgot what his name is, but it was a big deal. It was in all the magic news and stuff. Because he was doing all the, the bits with the lady and she- Yeah, the touch my that. leg and all this stuff. And oh. yeah, you can't do that anymore, you know? No, no. You can't do that. No. But yeah, it's a great- got a, got a magic story for the rest of her life now, doesn't she? Yes, she does. Yikes. Yeah, it was, it was a little, it, it was a little creepy. I didn't know when I was pulling up that- That's that, cringy. Yeah. It's yeah. a little cringy. And it's before David even had that trouble. I mean, <laughs> yeah, really. Right. right that was what year was that? Way, right. Any like idea what year it was? That has uh, to be um, like like mid the late, like 86, 87, 80s, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, yeah, exactly right. Maybe even, oh. maybe even 1990 at the latest, but it was, it was early for sure. But yeah, it's pretty, right. it pretty big. It would not, that wouldn't fly today at all. But you know but, what? I do remember that moment, Alex. I remember that that his you know that turning and that that pulling it. I mean, the whole thing was so baffling. It really you was. You know, that trick to me became like an introduction to magic and magicians because when I first learned magic, I had a couple of books. I went to a couple of stores and I didn't know much about the magic community at large or you know the brotherhood or all that stuff. You know, and I found out there was a, a magic club, and I went to the magic club. <laughs> pardon me <clears throat> and i went not knowing anybody there just went and said look listen i read a bunch of books i love magic and i just heard about this so i'm here for the first time and everybody welcomed me everyone was really nice to me and really kind and the guy did this trick and he did it well i ended up becoming really good friends with the guy he became a real dear friend of mine but the way i we 
were introduced to each other was I saw this, I went home, you know, I didn't really talk to anyone afterwards in terms of like making any real connections. I did magic and that was it. But I came back to the next meeting and I saw that guy and I actually had a chance to talk with him because I think he left right after that, that meeting when he did it. And I told him how much it, it affected me because that trick, it's such a fooler, you know, it hurt me bad. And this was the kind of kindness that I came to embrace in all of magic. And this was, you know, this is just like a, like a, like a fractal of what that is. But the, I told the guy, look, I saw you do this trick with the sketch pad and the card rose out. He said, really, you like that trick? It's like, I have no idea how you did it. It fooled me so bad. It was just amazing. And I just want to say it was great magic and, you know, great job. He's like, you really like that trick? Would you do that trick? I was like, I loved it. I would love to play with the idea. The guy showed up to the next meeting and he brought me an old mum magazine from like the late seventies, early eighties. Mm -hmm. And it was Martin's write up with all the illustrations and all the stuff. And he gave me the sketch pad and said, here you go, young man, you should learn to do that trick. I bet it would work out really well for you. And you know, that was the beginning of me going to magic clubs. It was like Ooh. really inspiring and really cool. That is, that sounds a lot like Conjure community actually. It's the, it's the, the spirit that's in Conjure community that I didn't feel in magic clubs. Like I stopped going mm -hmm. to magic clubs because it wasn't like that after a while, you know, yeah. people are more self-centered and you know, yeah, it's really, really wild, really wild. That's a good story. Yeah. 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 Ooh, let's see. John Heinen. I, good man. Let's John see. John Heinen. Newell, oh, I see, I see your, I see your uh, question in the Q and A. Yeah, yeah, we should talk music more. I didn't know you were a, a keyboard prodigy. So um, let me just say that that we have one more clip that we should watch. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's and then it's a good one. It's Harry Anderson and Martin Lewis on the John Davidson show. Anybody remember that show? John I Davidson. Now there was a good looking man he's a good looking man that's incredible that is incredible <laughs> that's incredible he's like the jeff milky of tv <laughs> that's incredible i used to love that's incredible that was one of my favorite shows on tv when i was a little kid really <laughs> yeah i loved all those stories i thought they were neat that's incredible that's incredible yeah. incredible he had great he had great hair all right i don't i <laughs> haven't seen hair. it i haven't seen this clip alex what's the what is this clip all about so it looks like when it starts, well, first of all, Harry and, and uh, Martin are good friends, right? They're both members of a little organization they put together called the Left-Handed League. And uh, I think Harry became a little bit famous before his other brothers in the Left-Handed League. And he was sort of helping them to ride uh, his bit of fame and get some from themselves. And I think that's what this is. Basically, Harry is on TV doing a comedy bit with his buddy Martin and the joke goes a weird direction and then we finish the clip with Martin actually doing what I think is one of his, again, you know, I, I think cardiographic is what he's famous for, but I think that this is one of his tricks that in my heart, I think this might be his best trick, the trick that he does on this clip. And rather than see it on a, in a cold hard studio where it's being done for magicians, you know, being done for a real audience seems, you know, just more organic and better to me. All right, let's check it out. Anywhere, Martin Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Martin. How you doing, John? Now, I know we can't trust Harry, but you are really a dangerous character. I, what are now, you wait two a minute, up to? John, this, Why are you two standing there like that This is what together? I'm here today about. Now, a couple of weeks ago, you had Martin on, and you had Jack Klugman on. That's Martin right. did all that fancy shuffling, finger-flinging stuff. And the, had yes. The, had the, hey, he dealt you all uh, poker hands, and yes. you all won and all. And uh, this is like an equal time thing, because that was a lot of monkey hair, you know? I mean, people don't cheat like that in card games. And I challenged Martin. He's... Cut it out, okay? Okay? Okay, I'm talking, okay? okay. He... We're going to play a game, only it's going to be like you were really playing a card game, okay? All right. Like you were really playing a card game. You shuffle the cards, you see? Right. If Martin's playing cards, he doesn't get to shuffle all the time. So if he again shuffle, he can't I don't shuffle that well, man. Yeah. Huh. I'm used to, I play crazy eights and fish, you know? <laughs> All right, okay. They are you're shuffled. With, you working with new fingers? These here, cards are shuffled. All okay, right. okay, now give him a cut. Wait, no, no, don't come to him. Don't, don't touch him. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. What? What? You you, you cut him up. You shuffle. You, do, you deal. You yeah, deal. I deal? You deal. How many yeah, cards? What are we doing? Five cards. Poker. Play well, poker. So who's I, playing? Uh, it's three. One? For two. five cards? Yeah. It's five cards. Five cards each. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Two. <laughs> three. Okay. Four. four. Five. Okay, now see, Martin didn't shuffle, Martin did deal, Martin can't cheat, see, because Martin isn't quick enough. Everybody look at their hands. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you do something sneaky? Did he do something sneaky? No. He 
you do something sneaky? No. You did? Okay, you two change hands. Trade hands. Trade hands. Oh. I'm being strict, but there's purpose here. Because I'm making sure Martin can't cheat, because when it's like this and the conditions are tight, then you can't cheat by that sleight of hand. Then you have to be clever, and that's why I brought this along. I made this last night. This is a... Show you what this is. <laughs> Well, I is, told you you were going to cheat. What is that? This is a great device here. This is, I don't know what to call it yet. But see, it's this little card clinger here, see? And it closes, it hooks up to, uh, to here. And then it's, uh, then it runs down here. Show you where it. No. <laughs> see, I got it. Harry. You can see it's kind of strapped. Are we still on the air? Am no. I on? I'm on my mark now, aren't I? Okay. 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 See, what happens? What happens is you go into the card game, and of course they don't see you drop your drawers because that's all under the table. See, because because the table is up higher. See, and then what you do is no, this is good. This is very good. Then um, this was invented by a guy. The idea was developed by a guy named Swami Bachi, who was a magician who just had a head. He didn't have a body. And, uh, but he was a good magician. He was a hell of a bowler, too. He was a great guy. Uh, anyway, what you do is you got these cards, you see, and they're hidden, see? Now, you got to imagine that I got my coat on, see? I got my pants up, see? And then, and then, uh, what you do is you do this, see? You, you string this across. Now, where's those cards you dealt me, see? Now, imagine I have my sleeve on, see? Then I just spread my knees, and look what happens. See, it comes shooting into my hand. And then, then I take... I got it, I got it. Okay, then, then, but see, this is very discreet. You gotta work with this stuff. I just made this last night. You gotta practice this stuff. <laughs> then, these cards, then these cards end up shooting back up your sleeve, you see? And then, you go to the table and you got, see? I got a full house. See, that'd be about anything you got. I got a full house right there. What you got? What you got? I've got a royal flush, Harry. I got a royal flush in spades. <laughs> Wait a minute. John, why did you What do you got? Uh, another royal flush. Wait a damn minute. Here. Come it's on. A royal flush. I didn't say it's a royal this flush. This took me all night, guys. This is. How did you do that? This is squid line. You know what? You gotta go to a squid store to get this stuff. This is. I'll tell you what, John. Uh, uh, I'll show Boy. him mine if you'll show him yours. This is not easy. I mean, I went to. We have to show you, okay? Uh, just we, we have a little thing here. See. Oh! <laughs> okay. 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 I'm taking my card. Okay. Misleading is one thing. Where are you but going? You cheat. That makes me sick. Where are you going? I've never been so insulted in my life. Harry. Told me Harry. I just have to say, Harry Anderson was entertaining. He I was loved entertaining. Him so much. I loved him so much. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. All right, all right. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. All right. So there's more, right, Alex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, this, this is where Martin actually has his spot. They, this was the intro to Martin's spot. All right, all right. All right please don't leave. Clap. Harry, oh, come on. Harry, come on. This is so. Uh, your collar's out. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Could could you do something while Harry's off? To, uh, well, I had hoped that, that I had suspected that this may happen. Yes. So I took the liberty of. Uh, you of suspected he would drop his pants on our show. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Harry. You got to remember. That's right. <laughs> I decided to show you a little problem that utilizes some dice and a dice cup, and this is a gambler's dream. All right, man, I just overlook everything. That yes, is, indeed. That's a, yes, that's a you, dice cup. You've yes, just ruined the whole thing, no. that's okay. I don't know. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> what would happen was during the gambler's dream, he took two of the dice that he was using and yes. placed them inside the cup, shook them up, yes. and managed to surreptitiously, surreptitiously place one into his pocket. Yes. Of course, he made it come back underneath the cup, and it was uh, a loaded dice, and oh. that was how it worked. Now, I'll do that again for you. Please. Very slowly. Two go beneath the cup. Yes. One goes inside the pocket. Right, I'm and if I've done close. it right, yes. maybe I can get all of those three back uh, this way. I'll do it for you one more time. I'll do it for you one more time. Two. Two. I see two. An empty cup. I'm looking at two. They go inside. I shake it up. One goes inside the pocket. Now, if I've done this correctly, I, that one should come back from underneath the cup. 
Oh, wait a minute, it's come back, but it's a little bit smaller than it's supposed to be. I don't know if you can see that. That's, um, this, this, you see, is where the gambler's dream started to turn into a nightmare. Yes. Yes. Maybe he thought he could change it back by using sleight of hands, so he placed a small die into the hand, and he brought it back to the right size. <laughs> but unfortunately, the wrong color, which is a little bit embarrassing. That is such an art. Mark. Finally, oh, <laughs> finally, he um, uh, he decided that maybe he had one more chance. Yes. He put the small green die away. Yes. And yet, when it came back, it was a little bigger than it most. A little bigger. Than it should be. You know. You know, John, this I can understand. Yes. What I don't understand <laughs> is where these come from. Oh. <laughs> wow! <laughs> that, Mark, Martin, that is fabulous. Yeah. How did you do it? I was just kidding, guys. You got time for one more? Yeah, Harry. This is very good. No, but huh? no, we don't I have time. I practiced this. I no. was up late. Your fly is open. <laughs> <laughs> this we, is good. Harry Anderson, Martin Lewis, thank you so much. We'll break away. <laughs> Why isn't that stuff on TV anymore? I guess it is, but not on those shows. I, I've never seen that that appearance, man. You know, it's, it's, it's funny to think about how big of a star Harry Anderson was. Like the dude was a gigantic TV star uh, in the eighties, Night Court, but Saturday Night Live. Um, he was on what Cheers? Oh, Cheers yeah, he started. A, I think that's what's really interesting is Harry created such a great character that they just put it on Cheers. You know. <laughs> He came on for a walk on and it was so great. They just kept bringing him back. And I think that just really got him rolling, you know? Made yeah, him a star. personality that was just larger than life, right? Oh, he's like, so he great. Even, the camera couldn't even capture it. He was just so big, right? And some of those, spe we should do a Harry Anderson thing sometime. Yeah, right? Yeah, there's plenty of good stuff there. There's no doubt. Yeah. We should definitely do that. Yeah, really? you know, Aaron, Aaron got to hang out with Harry Anderson uh, not, long, not, not too long be About before he passed. Uh, uh you worked uh, uh yeah yeah that's right you worked right, in italy yeah in italy and he uh he wanted to go first so i was waiting i was we were backstage and i was like i had to ask for a picture so he was gonna go first and i was gonna follow him and that was weird and <laughs> and he was just he was super nice and i just was like look dude i'm backstage with you and uh if I don't ask you to take a picture with me, I'm just like literally gonna regret it my whole life. You know, is that cool? And he's like, it's totally cool. It's like in my phone. It's not in my phone. It was pretty great, you know. You know what? You know what else Harry. was pretty great, dude? Is that is that Harry came out and phoned it in, like really phoned it in, like <laughs> didn't really give two craps about his performance. <laughs> and then Aaron Fisher came out and brought the house down Slay. after him. Yeah, that was our, that was Harry's plan. He's just helping you know, the young guy out. He mailed it in why. so you would slay. That That's was why. why. It. it wasn't that he wasn't, you know, really into it anymore. <laughs> but he was, super you, gracious to us. he was super gracious to us and it was really uh, a lifetime treat, you know. Because awesome. I grew up, you know, watching him on Night Court and him being just, you know, before I was even interested in magic, I was fascinated by every bit he did, you know. Right. right. Lou, Lou Inton said that he, he got to see him a lecture a short time before he passed. I didn't even know Harry lectured. Yeah, it was few and far yeah, between. Very few, Rare. very few. Yeah. Wow, that would have been a real treat. One of his favorite tricks that I do is mishmash card. That's a great piece, isn't it? That's so cool, man. I, I got love like that. two that or book, three of them. This guy is so much fun to read. Oh, There's right so back there. In there. It's, it's a cool so book. I love it. I love Harry. I think he, he was just, you know, it was a gift that he actually yeah. decided to do it and do magic, right? Because that guy probably could have decided to do anything. He probably could have been a singer or, you know, a musician. But he decided to be into comedy. You know, comedy was where, where it hit for him and, and magic. And that's, uh, you know, what a gift for us. We even got well, the experience. Okay. Sorry, we got a little off topic today. But hey, thanks for joining us today for Afternoon Astonishment. Getting to look at uh, Martin and do us a favor. Hit the like button on this video. Tells YouTube we're doing a good job. Go ahead, subscribe to our channel. You know you want to. Do it! Do it! <laughs> By the way, hey, if you've never tried out a proper magic club, come over to Conjure Community. This is where we jam. We do it right here. It's the world's best magic club. See the link in the description.
And uh, we will see you next time on Afternoon Astonishment.